Hey guys, this is 1-3, which is measuring and constructing angles. So what I would like for you guys to do is take a moment to read everything that is on this slide. So please go ahead and pause your video and read what is here. Okay, what we're looking at today is angles. An angle is formed by two rays with a common endpoint. So if I look at this angle here, I have ray RS and ray RT. So they share point R. R is called the vertex of your angle. Okay, so that common endpoint is the vertex. There are several ways that we can name an angle. The first is just by naming it with this vertex letter, which is angle R. So if I look at this, I could name this angle here as angle R. I can also name the angle by a point on the ray, the vertex, then a point on the other ray. So I could name this angle as SRT, which is here, or as TRS, which is here. Okay, it doesn't matter the order of which ray you pick first, but the important thing is that the vertex is in the middle. So you need to make note on your study guide that the vertex is always in the middle when we are naming angles. Write that here. Okay, so please add that to your note. So anytime you are naming with three letters, your vertex again is in the middle. Okay, sometimes you will see a number here that is not a degree. Okay, so then that means that's a naming number. I can name this angle as angle one. So like you see here. Um, one important point here is that you cannot name the angle with just one letter, just by its vertex if there is more than one angle there. So if I draw a set of angles here and I keep this SRT and I add, I don't know, W over here, I cannot name this angle here angle R like I did up here because I don't know if I'm talking about this angle, if I'm talking about this angle or the entire angle. So I would have to use three letters when naming this angle right here. All right, so if you have any questions about this slide, please write it in your note-taking guide now. Okay, so let's look at an example for naming our angles. I want to name three angles in this um, picture. So I'm gonna start by naming this angle right here. All right, so I have angle one, which can also be named as angle Q, T, R. Again, I cannot name that angle as angle T because there is more than one angle right here. Okay, the next angle that I'm going to name is this one right here. Okay, so that is angle two. And I can also name that as angle R, T, S. And the last angle that I'm going to name is this whole angle right here which I can name as angle Q, T, then S. Okay, I can also, in all of these, reverse the order of the letters. So instead of Q, T, S, I could have S, T, Q, or I could flip-flop the R and the S, or the Q and the T. Okay, but notice all of these, T is in the middle, because T is, in, T is the vertex, so it will always be in the middle when we're naming these angles. All right, so any questions on this, please write it in your note-taking guide now. Okay, next thing is you look on the left-hand side of your note-taking guide, you will see the vocabulary right here. Um, if you would like to sketch a picture next to those angles, then please go ahead and do so now. Um, but our acute angles are going to be anything between 0 and 90. Our right angles are exactly 90 degrees. Our obtuse angles are greater than 90. And our straight angles are exactly 180 degrees. Okay, so obtuse are between 90 and 180. Um, so the only one of these that might be new is straight angle. It's just a line. So let's take a look at example 2 here at measuring angle AOD. Well, the first thing that we want to do is to find angle AOD. All right, angle AOD is this angle right here. We're gonna start with A, O is our vertex, and then we're gonna come over to D. 
So this angle right here, this whole thing, is going to be our angle that we are measuring. All right, now, whenever you look at your measuring with a protractor, look at where your zero is. Okay, so this is on the line, here zero. So I'm looking at the bottom set of numbers. Okay, so this red line cuts about halfway between 160 and 170, so I'm gonna say it's about 165 degrees. All right, then I'm gonna look at COD, which is this angle right here, COD. So I'm looking at this angle. Now, notice that neither of these sides are on the zero line. So that means pick a set of numbers. It doesn't matter if it's the outside set or if it's the inside set. You're gonna get the same thing either way. I'm gonna use the outside set. So this right here is at about 15 degrees. Over here, we're gonna hit about 105 degrees. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take 105 degrees and from that I'm gonna subtract 15 degrees because it's 15 degrees off of zero. So that means that the measure of angle COD is 90 degrees. Um, one thing that I wanna point out right here real quick is notice that I have a little M in front of this angle COD. That means the measure of the angle. If you would for me, please, in your notes, add M's right here because there should be measures of those angles. All right, so if I'm talking about the angle itself, I write angle COD. That is the actual geometric figure. If I'm talking about its degree, I'll put a little M in front to signify that I'm talking about the measure of the angle. If you have any questions on this slide, please write it on your note-taking guide now. Okay, the next thing that we're gonna look at is our angle addition postulate. Our angle addition postulate is just like the segment addition postulate that we did in section one, two. Basically, all it says is that we can add angles together. So if I just look at this picture, I can take my blue angle, I can add to it the red angle and get the angle measure of the entire thing. So again, it is just like the segment addition postulate that we did yesterday. And again, the thing that I want you to focus on is being able to set up your equation. All right, so let's take a look at our example three. I'm given that the measure of angle ABD is 37 degrees. So I'm going to write in my angle here that I am given that this is 37 degrees. All right, so this is ABD. Now, the next one is angle ABC is 84 degrees. Okay, so ABC, so this whole angle from here to here is 84 degrees. I wanna find the measure of angle DBC. So I am looking for this angle right here. So again, the first thing that I want you to do is to set up your angle addition postulate equation. So I'm gonna start by finding how to name this angle here. It is gonna be the measure of angle A, B, D. Again, B is in the middle because it is the vertex of that angle. And the A and the D can be switched, that's fine. But the B has to be in the center. Okay, so I've got this angle here, plus I want this angle right here. So that's gonna be angle D, B, C. So the measure of angle D, B, C, is equal to the measure of the entire angle. Okay, so the whole angle starts from A, the, again, the vertex is B, and the side is C. So it's gonna be the measure of angle ABC. All right, so again, my two smaller angles are gonna to add to be my larger angle, and again, notice that in each one of these, B is the center letter because it is the vertex of all three angles. Now that we have my angle addition postulate set up, and yes, I want you to write this every time because again, we're gonna be using it later, is I'm gonna plug in what I know. I know that the measure of angle ABD is 37 degrees. I don't know what the measure of angle DBC is, so I'm just gonna put my X in right there. And I know that the measure of um, angle ABC is 84 degrees. So at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna subtract 37 degrees from both sides. Okay, and 
I'm going to get that x is going to measure, or it's going to equal 47. Not 7. So 47. Okay, so again, go back and reread what we're looking for. We want to find the measure of angle DBC. That is what we made x. So I want you to write that the measure of angle DBC is equal to 47 degrees. Okay, and here is our answer. Again, any questions on this, please write it in your note-taking guide. Okay, let's take a look at this next slide. Um, this is in your key vocabulary in the right-hand side. We're talking about congruent angles. Again, from yesterday, this here is our symbol for congruent. And our measures of our angles are equal. That tells us we have congruent angles, okay? So angles that have the same measure. If they're both 30 degrees or 40 degrees or whatever the case may be, then I know that my angles are congruent. Okay, so measures are equal. This is a number equals a number. Geometric figures are congruent. So the angle is congruent to the other angle. Okay, it's important that you understand the difference between using the equal sign with the M's because numbers are equal and using the congruent sign with the angle symbols because angles are, and figures are congruent. All right, know that we are going to note congruent angles by these little swoop arc marks in the corners of the angles. So if you see these angles, that means that those are congruent. Now, when we talk about an angle bisector, remember that word bisect from section 1-2 when we talked about a segment bisector. We said a segment bisector was a point that cut the segment into two congruent pieces. Angle bisector is going to be the same thing. It is going to be a ray that cuts this angle into two congruent angles. So that will tell us that this angle here is congruent to this angle here. Any questions? Go ahead and mark them down now. So let's take a look at example four. All right, we are told that BD bisects angle ABC. So the first thing that I know is, again, that word bisect means to cut in half or to make two congruent pieces. So if I'm bisecting this angle, that means that this angle is congruent to this angle. So I am going to put that the measure of angle A, B, D, which is this angle here, is equal to the measure of angle D, B, C, which is this one here. Again, B is in the middle for both of those. So now let's keep reading our question. We're told that the measure of angle ABD is 6x plus 3. So for ABD, I'm going to plug in 6x plus 3. The measure of angle DBC is 8x minus 7. All right. So first things first, I am going to subtract 6x from both sides. And I'm going to get that 3 is equal to 2x minus 7. Then from here, we're going to add 7 to both sides. And I'm going to get that 10 is equal to 2x. Divide both sides by 2. I get that 5 is equal to x. Okay, now before you're happy and say, yay, that's my answer, go back again and reread the question. I want to find the measure of angle ABD. Okay, so the measure of angle ABD is 6x plus 3. So now that I know that 5 is x, I'm going to plug x in. So the measure of angle ABD is now 6 times 5 plus 3. Okay, so 6 times 5 is 30. And 30 plus 3 is 33. So the measure of angle ABD is 33 degrees. So again, any questions that you have, go ahead and fill those in on your note-taking guide. And we will go over any of your questions first thing in class tomorrow. So we will see you later. Have a great day, guys.